Good afternoon everyone, well afternoon here where I am, uh, good morning, good mid-morning, good midday, good evening, good early morning, wherever you are, and whatever you're doing right now, hope you're having a good one. My name is Ben, uh, this is the uh, Astrobiological Facebook group podcast, pretty clumsy name, if you can think of a better name, please let me know. So uh, yeah, again, how are you? Thanks for uh, listening. Right, so um, what's going on on this Monday? It's Monday here in Adelaide, Australia. Where, what day is it where you are? Um, yeah, well, welcome to uh, the Facebook Astrobiological, welcome to the Facebook Astrobiological uh, group. Um, it's linked to the Ben's Lab Facebook page. Uh, it's just a means I have of um, trying to promote my YouTube channel and just video work, which um slowly um slowly getting my head around it's a real learning curve video production let me tell you and uh youtube lately hasn't been uh, too too nice to the uh the small guys and gals so i'll talk about that a bit later but for now uh some some points of order for the group uh, before i do anything points of order um there are a bunch of people uh, looking to get into the group, um, but I've set up some simple questions for people to answer before they get in. Uh, that's mainly to, to uh, weed out, <coughs> excuse me, um, people who are just uh, click happy um, from the people who are genuinely interested in joining in and having an astrobiological good time on the group, talking about science and whatnot and related stuff. Um, Many of these people are, uh, yeah, like I say, just click happy, joining groups for the sake of it. If you can't answer those questions, um, I'm not going to let you in. Uh, if I could, I'll take a look at your profile, and if I could see that you uh, appear to be um, either in other groups that I, I'm, a, I'm a member of as well, uh, I'll let you in. If you seem to be of a scientific uh, bent. Um, not being like the school headmaster here, but uh, I've got to protect the group as well, and I guess my own my own business because uh, I can't have just uh, randoms getting into my computer uh, having a good old time. That ain't happening. So moving on, uh, a little bit of trouble in the last week or two on the group. A uh, member um, was helping me with some videos and um, some music and stuff, uh, and then. Got a bit big for his boots, I'm guessing, I guess, and um, wasn't happy that I was looking to um, enlisting the help of other people with certain things. So um, I got rid of him quick smart, and that uh, brings me to this point of order. Um, now, I'm not what to call headmaster, the group's for everyone to use, but uh, it's not just for uh, anyone to hijack and um, bend to their will. All right, it's uh, we're all here to just. Um, read science articles and uh, talk about astrobiolo astrobiological topics uh, and related topics. Um, you know, astronomy, space exploration, futurism, um, science fiction, if it floats your boat, it floats mine, that's for sure. Um, and so on and so forth. So, um, and people who are contributing to the group, yeah, I'm loving that. Posts are fantastic. Um, the cover photo, the cover banner is really fantastic. I'm loving that, and it's in on my YouTube channel as well. As uh, the uh, the channel icon and the cover photo for the the channel. So thank you to Anton for that for that work. It's uh, lovely, and anyone else who's contributing in the form of posts or comments, uh, suggestions. We're using the group for in a, a bit of a feedback capacity. In the last few days, I'm um, trying to fine tune my channel a bit. I realised that uh, as a little guy, um, I'm obviously uh, lacking some of the uh, skill sets required to produce uh, polished videos, and I understand that. I know how my stuff looks to a lot of people, 
And so I've been working on um, tweaking things like the uh, the intro sequence. I've been asking people what they think of that, and I'm getting a lot of uh, positive comments and constructive comments. You can be negative if you want, but be constructive about it. I'm fine with that. Uh, so thank you to all who've helped me uh, fine tune that little intro sequence. It's going to you know, be the intro for my videos from now on. So thank you all. Uh, it's mainly the people on this Facebook group who've and other groups who've been. Um, whom I've shared the videos, the intro sequence with, um, and they, they've all they've all piped in with suggestions, and so um, it's been pretty good actually. I never thought I'd, I've actually had trouble of getting feedback or opinions on my work since the channel began. And I only just hit upon the idea of using uh, this group and other groups to uh, ask people, because people in this group are, are inclined to venture forth with opinions on such things so yeah thanks a lot you know who you are big thumbs up to you okay um top contributors this week let's go to group insights briefly you may hear some funny noises that's me pressing the screen of my phone on which i'm recording this podcast at the moment how's the sound quality by the way i'm using a little lapel mic and my smartphone to do this so possibly won't be super duper but that's okay. Now, where are we? Let's go to the group. See what's going on with the group. Oh dear. Right. There we go. Oh, group insights. Okay, sorry. Bear with me. Okay, so it's growing pretty well. Uh, we've got uh, in the last, last week or so. 25 new members, it's nice, great, excellent. People are um, people are feeling the love. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Thank you to all new members. Uh, There's an increase in uh, engagement with the group from people within the group, members, uh, top contributors. Uh, let's take a look. In the last 28 days, uh, there's been some interesting discussions um, based around posts that uh, members have put up, uh, i.e. Raina Jamie Yee. Uh, she's put up a post uh, regarding some work she's doing on a novel, which was uh, led to some interesting discussions. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, those sort of posts are great. And I hope you're doing, uh, hope you're going well with your uh, writing at the moment, Raina. Um, it sounds really interesting, your idea. And I, uh, I'll, I'll love to check it out when it comes out. I'll, I'll share it if I can, and try and help you uh, get the word out there. Rohan Padgree has been uh, busily putting posts up. He's got his own group, I believe, a uh, futurism group, and he's showing it on this group. He's welcome to do so. Um, thank you, Rohan. And McCall Huda, Brad Lee, Zilkos Natume, and others. You know who you are. You've been putting posts up. Uh, thank you very much for um, making the group a, a fairly lively place this week. It's been pretty good. I've been enjoying checking in every day and seeing what's been going on. Uh, okay. And there's been some interesting posts in general from the, uh, the likes of uh, Bruce Dormane, an astrobiologist uh, who's a member of this group. Uh, his, his, some of his, stuff, his stuff is really good. And uh, today, yesterday, today, he put up a post uh, talking about Venus, which got me thinking about um, Venus. So uh, I'm getting, I'm gonna be pushing the uh, explore Venus hashtag a little bit this week because in my humble opinion, and it's only my humble opinion, a non astronaut, non-astronomer, um, non-working scientist anymore. I believe that uh, Venus is the place to explore. And this uh, an article I read today, this, uh, this, this journal article that Bruce Dorman A. Shored, uh, shared, sorry, rather, um, points to Venus as the um, as, as a place we can learn more about life on other in other solar systems on exoplanets because it's we we talk all the time about how planets become habitable or how they can be habitable uh, like earth or other worlds or you know Enceladus or Europa or other places where life could exist but we don't really look at the processes of the specific sequence of events by which a planet becomes uninhabitable so Venus obviously is it's it, it's it's identical to Earth to all intents and purposes in terms of uh, 
chemical and physical makeup um, and gravity and size. Its gravity is, I think, about 85% or 87% that of Earth. Uh, we'd be quite comfortable on the surface. But if we were on a surface, we'd need a really meaty spacesuit because uh, on the ground, it's about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe, and which is hot enough to melt lead um, because of a, an extremely thick carbon dioxide sulfuric acid atmosphere which is about 92 times thicker than our own well the pressure on the ground is 92 times that at the bottom of the ocean uh, so venus is obviously uh utterly hostile to human life unless we had some uh, really really high-tech hardcore protection but uh in up in the clouds if you get away from the surface and forget about looking at the uh, the whole living on the ground paradigm the way we land lovers are obsessed with and what if we went to the atmosphere, look to the atmosphere instead? Now, if you go to get to a certain level in Venus's atmosphere, um, the temperature is quite is comfortable. Like it's warm, it's hot even, but it's, it's definitely bearable because it's between 40 and 55 degrees. Um, and take it from an Aussie going through summer at the moment, uh, 40 degrees is you know not comfortable, but it's definitely you can definitely live in it. And the air pressure. At, at this particular um, zone within Venus's atmosphere is identical, practically identical to that on Earth. Uh, the atmosphere is still carbon dioxide. The sulfuric, the sulfuric acid clouds um, don't reach that level, so you're only dealing with uh, carbon dioxide clouds up there, but uh, some face masks and oxygen tanks will fix that up. But you don't need to wear bulky space suits or um, uh, insulated or, or temperature um, controlled, climate controlled um, space garb. That's what I'm saying. So if we look to um, use, I don't know, airships or dirigibles um, in the atmosphere of Venus, well, it's quite it's quite accessible, and that's really technically more uh, doable than you know Mars, in my opinion. That's just what I think. But it does make a certain kind of sense. And Venus has a, a, a lot to teach us about the processes that lead to... Venus is, is kind of like an, an alternate reality version of Earth, in a sense. Like it, it lies just within the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone around our sun. But, um, for whatever reasons, and there are a couple of reasons, which I'll go into in a second. Um, it just didn't make it, whereas Earth did. Earth went on to become habitable. Obviously it is, because, you know, it's full of life. Just look around you. Whereas Venus is as dead as a doornail, as is Mars, but we won't go into Mars. Um, Venus, however, okay, what happened to Venus? Okay, it's, it's lacking certain key elements that which Earth has, which enable life to thrive here. Um, for instance, Earth has a, a, magnetic, a magnetosphere, generated by its uh, active uh, dynamo magnetic core. And this uh, magnetosphere protects life on the ground and on the planet from cosmic radiation and the solar winds coming from the sun and um, interstellar space. Uh, now, Venus doesn't have this. For reasons unknown, it's believed to have had an active magnetic core some time ago, but it's shut down for reasons unknown. And finding that out, uh, would be a, a, a key um, avenue of research and I'm sure somebody's working on it but not me because obviously I'm not a scientist working for NASA or the ESA or anyone I'm just a guy sitting in front of his laptop looking out of his back window uh, doing a podcast on his smartphone but hey that's just my opinion I can get people talking about it um, also Venus lacks plate tectonics it does have a, a crustal movement and activity but active plate tectonics, which uh, play a key role on Earth in, in cycling um, atmospheric gases and venting heat from within the planet, uh, Venus doesn't have that. So as it, over the aeons, it's collected heat from the sun and from, and from within when it had uh, residual internal heat. Uh, the heat doesn't escape. So the planet just got hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and it became what it is now which is virtually an oven, a gigantic Earth-sized oven. That is Venus, this completely hostile world in every single way. 
And yes, so similar to Earth and others. So what happened? And, you know, astrobiologists are looking at Venus now as uh, a model for exoplanets in other solar, in, in uh, solar systems, you know, beyond their own. And I would really, really love to follow this up. So I'm gonna push the explore Venus hashtag a little bit. Um, and that hashtag actually brings me to, I guess a little, like a little, little mini poll I wanna run. Um, I'm working on a, a video on Wolf Rayat stars, which I mentioned once or twice in previous podcasts. That's almost done. Be up in a few days or so. But then after that, what do I do? Do I do a video? I'll be wanting to do one on extreme exoplanets because um, there are some worlds out there that, are, from what we can tell, are, are pretty nasty. And I'd like to um, take us to those, see what's out there. Uh, or do a video about ex exploring Venus and what can we learn from Venus? Or what? Okay, I'd like to do an astrobiological, astrobiological topic related video. What do you guys, what do you guys think would be interesting? That's, that's what I'm asking you. So, I, uh, I don't know. It, uh, all kinds of things. It's, it, the, the mind boggles, really. There's so, there's so many things to talk about. But uh, those two things stick in my head. Extreme exoplanets, um, exploring Venus. Oh, gee, I don't know. Um, in a recent collaboration I did with uh, Fedora Steeman's channel, uh, Frenomythic, uh, check it out. It's, it's a cool little video. We did a Google Hangout and spoke for about 35 minutes about uh, some astrobiological concepts. It was good fun, and I hope we do some more. Hey, Fedor, how you going? Um, we, we touched on this. We, we spoke about all kinds of things. We, we talked about uh, theoretical life in the clouds of gas giants, or, or Jupiter, but gas giants in general, I guess. Um, and other things. I mean, he, he's some of his videos explore um, life on Proxima B. That was a good video. I'd recommend that one. Um, slimes the biology of slimes and how they could uh, work on alien worlds. That was actually a pretty good video. Quite impressive, I was quite impressed with that one. Check that one out. If I think of it, I'll uh, share that on the group as soon as I can. I'm actually leaving a note to myself now. I'm leaving a note. Share for doors, slimes and Proxima B videos. Prox B vids. All right, cool, that's that. So that's uh, the podcast so far. Uh, we've done group stats, points of order. And again, please answer questions if you're looking to join the group. I am not want to be a nasty pasty, but um, I'm not gonna just fill up the group with uh, randoms who aren't gonna take take any part or, or who are, have nefarious uh, motives. So yeah, either answer questions or I'll just um, decline your request which I'm going to do very soon with about 25 requests that are up there. I'm sure they're lovely people, but uh, yeah, it's not much, not, not much of a big deal, just answer the questions. Um, the trouble last week uh, with a member of the group, or maybe it might've been two weeks ago now, a member of the group, um, I guess getting a bit big for their boots. Um, the group's not like, uh, you know, my cast in stone property, but yeah. It's for everyone to use and enjoy. Let's try and keep politics out of this as well. Um, if it relates to science, I don't mind, but uh, if it starts causing arguments and things, I'll, yeah, I'll stay clear of that, if that's okay with anyone. But uh, it's a good uh, range of topics that I'm seeing going up from other members, uh, some futurism type of topics. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been interesting. I've been watching a lot of it. I've been working on uh, my video stuff and my uh, intro sequences and my Wolf Raid video and and again using this group to some pretty pretty good effect to uh, get uh, feedback on the, the intro and I found one that I like and it seems I've got uh, some positive feedback from people so thank you very much. It's, uh, I'll be using you guys a lot for that from now on if that's okay with you. It uh, I guess it makes you part of the process. So. Look at it that way. Um, video up soon, Wolf Rayat Stars. It's uh, it's coming together. But then after that, I'm asking 
group members uh, sort of the either extreme exoplanets um, something about exploring Venus or uh, what and again I'm going to uh, share Fedor Steeman's videos on slimes and Proxima B because they're really cool and he's uh, watch it check out his channel subscribe to his channel while you're at it uh, Aaron Freeman another youtuber has joined the group how are you Aaron it's uh, great to have you along he does his little uh, science optimism videos on a daily basis uh, they're, they're a bit of fun just uh, like a, a daily thought for the day on a, a science related topic uh, with a little bit of a uh, fun and optimism thrown in uh, I, I watch those regularly and uh, comment on those when I can and uh, Adam's an interesting guy. He's got a fantastic voice. Just listen to his voice. It's like a musical instrument. He, he should be in like a... He could have been uh, John Luke Picard. Okay, that's a bold statement for me to make. But uh, his voice, he's like a Star Trek captain's voice. Just, just check it out. Great. Um, I think that's it for now. What else is there to talk about? It's, what else could I talk about? Um, that's probably it. I've rambled on about Venus a bit. That's uh, my current in topic of interest at the moment. But uh, yeah, I guess I'd like to ask you guys what uh, what kind of videos would you like to see? If you guys are obviously um, happy to give feedback on things that I do and be part of the process, you're part of the creative process by helping me out. So, you know, um, I'll let you in a little bit more and, uh, you know, sort of ask uh, for ideas too. I've got a lot of ideas too, but. Uh, they may not be user friendly because occasionally I tend to be a little bit, I don't know, Sheldon like in the things I like and not very um, populist, I guess. I'm not being, I'm not like elitist or anything, but uh, I do realize that uh, sometimes I don't, I'm a bit out of touch with what uh, the man on the street thinks when it comes to science and what they'd like to see. That's why kind of um, my channel is kind of done in an informal um, manner I'm trying to relate to uh, the regular person because um, there's no point really um, pushing science on other scientists because they've heard it all and uh, I'll, most of them know more than me but uh, I, it, there's nothing wrong with being interested in it and trying to push that interest if nothing else on people who otherwise wouldn't give science a second glance so and I'm getting some positive um, feedback in that on, in that regard as well. People are liking the energy of the videos. There's a few um, issues with uh, things like uh, audio and pacing and whatnot. I get that. I know that I talk very fast. I'm making a gargantuan effort right now to talk slowly and clearly. It's not easy because my brain zips along at about two bazillion miles an hour. That's just how I am. Um, and I'm going to work on the whole, uh, you know, speech thing as well, and pacing and stuff, because uh, I think this channel and this group can uh, be great. We can all work together to make it great, and um, and I want to do the right thing by it, by not just um, serving up slop. So yeah, I do it for, uh, I guess, I do it for my wife first and foremost because she's the reason I get out of bed in the morning. Um, but, uh, yeah, I want to try and change my life, but uh, doing it in this way, which I think is a very positive way. I mean, I went to university, worked in laboratories and stuff for a while, and I found that I didn't really think much of it. It was full of uh, the same hypocrites and bozos that uh, you'll find in any, any other workplace. And... The minds are just as small, the opinions are just as narrow, um, and really I got, I got kind of disenfranchised with uh, the whole science world, but I've always liked media and stories and stuff, so I'd like to you know, use that, you know, speak, speak through that with this channel and this group. Um, I've got a whole bunch of ideas, I've got uh, so many ideas in my head. But uh, there aren't going to be enough hours in a day for probably three quarters of them to come to fruition. So, yep, I'm doing what I can. But, uh, keep uh, putting up posts. Um, yeah, post comments, likes, whatnot, making the group grow. Bring people in as well. 
uh, if you've got friends or whatever, family, who are into this stuff as well, um, yeah, by all means, add them. Um, they can always decline and just leave the group. It's, it's not going to hurt anyone. What have you lost? So, yeah. Um, bring people in. Share the group. The people have been doing that in the last few days. It feels like it's gaining a bit of traction. It's, it's great. So, I'm very grateful and uh, it's, I'm enjoying it a lot. And I, hope, and I think you guys are too. Many of you are. Um, I've met some interesting people. And that's what it's all about. It's all about uh, meeting interesting people and just, uh, I guess, uh, exchanging ideas and opinions and stuff. It's good fun doing that. I've, that's, that's my jam, man. I've always liked doing that. Since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Anyway, I've probably uh, crapped on enough for today. Uh, this is the, uh, my name's Ben. This is the Astro Biological Facebook group podcast. Um, Another little uh, bit of homework for you guys. Uh, can you think of a better name for that podcast? Because I can't try saying that with a mouthful of peanuts. Okay, it's very cumbersome to say. That's uh, I'll leave you with that. New name for the Facebook group podcast. And uh, this is Astrobiological, bringing you the universe in plain human. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.